For thousands of years, the American River Basin has been home to one of Earth's great migration stories. In separate runs, each fall, winter, and spring, like clockwork, Chinook salmon would return from their Pacific Ocean odyssey, seeking out their natal streams. Here they will spawn, fulfilling their circle of life. The winter and spring runs have been designated by the state of California and the federal government as endangered. Now, because of the severe California drought, the fall run is also at risk. Each November, adult salmon re-enter San Francisco Bay and begin their journey into either the San Joaquin, American, or Sacramento Rivers. On the Sacramento River, just north of Discovery Park, a few will enter Steelhead Creek, which will in turn flow into Dry Creek. Their destination will be the Dry Creek Watershed. Once they re-enter the fresh water streams of the Sacramento Valley and foothills, their bodies are unable to readapt to fresh water. They will perish, but even in death, they will play a vital role. Their carcasses will become food for the native fauna or become plant food for the valley flora. Salmon carcasses will also serve as food for some of the smallest creatures in our streams, macroinvertebrates. Macroinvertebrates in turn will serve as food for the salmon fry. Because some microinvertebrates species are highly susceptible to pollution, they are indicators of water quality, much like the canary in the coal mine. Both for the salmon fry and the food they feed upon, keeping our streams free of pollutants is an imperative. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, reported that for the year 2014, California had recorded unseasonably high temperatures as well as a severe lack of precipitation. The California Central Valley recorded the driest period in the state's recorded history. NOAA also warned that the severe drought would continue into 2015. Precipitation totals for the Sacramento Valley for June 30, 2014 through November 30, 2015 equaled only 1.57 inches. Normal for this period should have been 14.84 inches. State restrictions on urban watering of lawns and gardens further reduced runoff into local streams. The Chinook swim upstream through the Sacramento Valley, reaching into the current cities and communities of Roseville, Rockland, Loomis, and Granite Bay. Here they will spawn in our local creeks. It is early November and there has been little precipitation. 
Lydia Sizelove takes water samples along Secret Ravine. There is no sign of the annual salmon migration. In late November, the Dry Creek Conservancy conducts their annual salmon count. Because of the poor water conditions in 2015, sightings of breeding Chinook occurred later than in previous years. As a result, the salmon migration count was postponed until December. The DCC's annual salmon count reflects a best effort survey. Besides environmental factors, survey results can differ from year to year, as there is also a fluctuation in the number of volunteers. In the annual count, participants walk our local streams, recording the number of sightings of live salmon, carcasses, and reds. Salmon nests are called reds. After the female deposits her eggs and the male fertilizes the eggs, the resulting nests have a distinct structure. To understand the data collected from the yearly November salmon count, many variables must be taken into account. On the graph, we see the past six years. The blue line represents live salmon, the green line shows the number of carcasses tagged, and the yellow line indicates possible reds. 2015, 2013, and 2010 indicate extremely poor migration years. On the second chart, we have added rainfall amounts. The November 2015 count indicated a near collapse of Chinook salmon migration. As we have noted earlier, 2015 was one of the driest years in California's recorded history. The fall rains arrived late. Only a partial salmon count was taken in early December. In November 2014, a significant amount of precipitation occurred in the second half of the month. As a result, the salmon count occurred on schedule. The wet weather allowed the salmon access to their spawning grounds. In 2013, rainfall was only 0.88 inches. Drought once again complicated the run. 2012 showed a normal rainfall. As a result, numbers of live sightings increased remarkably. The 2011 salmon run precipitation was poor, and again the result was a poor salmon run. 2010 seems to have been an anomaly. Adequate rainfall, but a very poor salmon run. While having a normal rainy season might be the most important factor in preserving the Chinook salmon, other factors have also contributed to the Chinook being designated an endangered species. The lucky few fingerlings, Chinook, who are able to enter the Pacific Ocean will face a multitude of dangers. While circling 1,500 miles in the Pacific Ocean, the Chinook will feed on aquatic insects and small fish. Global climate change creating warmer oceans could disrupt the salmon's food supply. Their prey may migrate further north seeking colder waters. From historical records, warm El Nino currents should have brought California and the Central Valley relief from the record drought. Both the 1998 and 1983 El Nino currents did just that, but the strong 2015 El Nino weather pattern has brought the Central Valley only normal precipitation.
We cannot stop urban development, but enlightened city and county planning can create healthy urban communities as well as healthy ecosystems. Green belts not only preserve our native wildlife and native flora, but also provide flood protection and a respite from urban life. The El Nino weather pattern, which was expected in the fall of 2015, suddenly arrived in March of 2016. We will have to wait eight months when we will observe again if the fall Salmon Chinook run will return to the Dry Creek watershed and in what numbers. The Dry Creek Conservancy is a non-profit organization dedicated to both preserving and improving the watershed in the American River Basin. We support restoration projects, both large and small. We also support youth outreach projects, helping students learn about our environment. Look for us at community environmental fairs and conferences. Learn how you can become involved in helping to preserve our watershed. Follow us on Facebook or on our website, www.drycreekconservancy.org.